Hey guys, even here, and as you know, yesterday at Detroit Pro, Martin Fitzwater expectedly won the show and qualified for the Mr. Olympia. It was a really good package from Martin Fitzwater, and overall, the show was just really amazing because the top two was extremely close. A lot of people actually had Goodwita winning instead of Martin, but in my opinion, Martin deserved it. However, once again, it was really, really close. I think the main reason how Martin closed the gap was with his back. From the front, from the sides, it was basically impossible to say who's better. And you could say there are some shots from the front that good Vito is potentially winning. You can go and watch my pre-judging video and see exactly which poses, but again, from behind, it wasn't really... It wasn't that close. And also, Martin came in much better for the finals. He was maybe a little bit watery, a tiny bit at the pre-judging, and then he dried out and he just looked harder, much harder at the finals. Another thing that I completely forgot to mention yesterday in my video, and it has to be mentioned, it's the production of this show. The background and the lighting, Fuad, Ben and Paul Ozan, they actually killed it with the production of this show. Everybody was complaining about this for years and they are the first to actually do it. There were no ads, no light shows, no smoke, no lasers, nothing of a sort. And also the lighting was really, really good. It was just showing the physics in the best way possible. So it was a really, really good show because of that. Also, prior to this show, there was a lot of talk about how not a lot of top bodybuilders will enter this show, but I think this was maybe for the better. I mean, first of all, these two guys came in ready, and they were like 100% both of them. They could not have been any better. If James Hollinshead was at his show, would he beat Martin Fitzwater? I don't think so. I do not think so. I think I'll just say, no way. It would not happen. Yeah, James beat Martin before once, but that wasn't Martin at his best, and that was two years ago. Martin made a solid progress, you're gonna see in a second exactly how much progress and where he made it. And his conditioning here and fullness and everything, I think he would destroy James, honestly. James is not near this level of professionalism, he never brought this kind of conditioning and fullness also. So I think Martin, even though he's a shorter and smaller guy, I think he would beat James. And I also think... Potentially, Goodwito would beat him as well. As far as Tony Burton, I don't think there is a chance of him beating Martin Fitzwater. Martin was really freaking good here. And I think, I think it was really close between Goodwito and Tony Burton at the Arnold Classic Brazil, but that wasn't Goodwito at his best. Here, he was really good. And also, Tony wasn't really planning on doing Detroit Pro. He started prepping late, so if they let him compete... I think he would also probably lose to Goodwito and Martin too, of course. So yeah, it would be awesome if they were there because it would be more men, more more bodybuilders at the show. But I don't think it would be an easy win for any of those guys. Maybe Akeem. If Akeem showed up and he was really good as he was at both Arnold's, then I think maybe he would beat these two guys. But that's about it as far as the active guys who are competing these days. Beef Stew would be a really good addition to this lineup, to these three guys. He also has a similar physique to a point. So, yeah, it would be better if those guys were here, but I think the top two would be probably the same. And because these guys were so similar, so close, it made this show so much fun. And hopefully next year there will be more bodybuilders using the opportunity to actually have some really good photos with great background, great lighting, and win a lot of money. Martin just won $25,000 for winning the first place, and also he won the best poser award. He also got some money for that, Goodwito won the most muscular award, and Ronald Gordon, this new guy here on the left, I never heard of him before, he actually got third place here, and he got the most conditioned, most shredded award. Now, as you can see, these awards were given to top three guys in whichever order, I don't think they thought this uh, too much. Just like in the Arnold Classic, like, uh, Samson won the best poser award, but really the best posing was Antoine Weyan, but he was like 7th, so you can't give it to, to the last guy, you gotta give it to the top guys, and so this guy won the most shredded award, was he really the most shredded guy here, was Goodwito really the most muscular guy, was Martin really the best poser, I think they're not too far off, but I think these awards were like more symbolic, you know, it's not really, uh, there isn't really a strict criteria for it. So as you know, Martin won, Goodwito was second, Ronald Gordon was third, and Justin Rodriguez ended up all the way down to fourth. Guess what's his next plan? What do you think? 
Well, he's doing the New York Pro. He wants to beat Nick Walker and qualify for the Mr. Olympia. It's not gonna happen, man. It's not gonna happen. I mean, he's being beaten by no-name guys. I mean, look at this guy next to him. I mean, Justin was 8th at the Mr. Olympia. Guys, 8th at the Mr. Olympia. And now he's not even able to crack the top 3 at, like, the weakest lineup of the year. So what do I think he should do? Should he really do the New York Pro? Or maybe see that one out and do the California Pro one week later? What I think is that he should retire. That he's done. He was eight, guys. Eight best bodybuilder in the world. And look at where he's at now. And it's not gonna get any better. There is nothing he can do. He's as shredded as he can be. He's as full as he can be. It's the age that caught up with him. You know, his midsection grew. His limbs are losing size. And there is nothing he can do to control that. So, yeah, if he likes to compete and he's okay with uh, placing this slow and be beaten by these newbies, these, these new guys who are really not top pros like he was recently, if he's okay with that and he enjoys competing, then sure, I could understand that. But really, is he going to get better in his career from now on? No, no, he's definitely on a down path and he's just going to get worse and worse with years. Let's wait and see how far he will go. Once again, a very good battle, a really good addition from Martin Fitzwater. Great production, great background, great lighting, awesome show. Martin Fitzwater is going to the Mr. Olympia. In my eyes, he is top 10 Olympia material. If you guys disagree with me, comment down below. All right, the next thing we got is a very, very interesting one. It's basically a preview for the Ampro Cup Spain. And it's these two guys who are going to be battling at that show, Michal Krizo and Behrouz Tabani. Now, we can't really see their full physiques. Krizo is wearing a tank top and Behrouz is wearing shorts. And the thing is, Behrouz's weakness is his legs. As far as the upper body right now, right here, I mean, from this angle as well, Behrouz probably looks better. So who's gonna win this show? I can't tell for sure right now because these guys, in my opinion, are very, very close. We know that Behrouz is gonna be ripped to shreds. He's always gnarly, grainy, just like Heidi Japan, basically. His flaw are his legs. They're not the biggest, the fullest. But Krizo, I mean, Krizo is very good, very complete, but like, I don't think he made a ton of progress from last year. The best way we can kind of get the idea of what's going to happen is if we look at the last year. Because Behrouz competed against Samson at Romania Pro. And also, Krizo competed against Samson at Prague Pro. So we got these two comparisons. We can see what these guys looked like standing next to Samson. So as you can see, there is an obvious uh, gap in Behrouz's physique. It's definitely his legs, especially the outer sweep, the lateral head. It's not popping out enough, so his legs kind of seem flat, especially for his upper body. I mean, he was peeled, even in the legs, everything was just shredded, and he has a really good shape, really good structure, but again, I don't know about the legs, you know, he's kind of incomplete. And Krizo, I don't think he's gonna make a ton of progress, I think Behrouz probably made more progress. Krizo is kind of coming, you know, it's all about the polish for this guy, how conditioned, how full, and maybe some little improvements, but really, he's not growing anymore, he hasn't been for quite some time. If you listen to his YouTube videos, basically, he's really taking his off-seasons like true off-seasons, he's training less, he is not eating a lot of food, he is only going as high as 400 grams of carbs, and not a lot of those meals are, you know, real food meals, he's taking a lot of shakes. It seems like he's really trying to make it easy for him to just maintain what he's got, and, you know, try really hard when he's prepping to just, you know, look as polished as possible, but, you know, it feels like he's doing this because it's his job. I don't think he's that much, that passionate about bodybuilding anymore, but I don't know, I mean, he's very good, if I had to put my money on somebody, I would be, I would definitely put it on Krizo. I think he's more of a safe bet, but I don't know. I think Backrose is probably going to make a lot of progress. All right, next, we had a really interesting guest posing at the Detroit Pro. And we had a really good comparison of Samson Dauda versus Hunter Labrada. And in some shots, in some videos, it kind of looks like Hunter is bigger than Samson Dauda. Is that really the case? I mean, Samson just competed recently, so he is not at his biggest. He was very shredded a couple of weeks ago, 
And what is he doing now? I'm assuming he's taking it easy. He probably uh, stepped off of everything and he's just trying to maintain as much as possible. But he's not really growing and he's not really staying super shredded. So this is not necessarily Samson at his biggest. And Hunter, this is his peak of season. And really, he looks bigger than ever in the off season. He truly looks like he gained a whole bunch of muscle and even though yeah even though samson competed recently and he's probably off of things still for hunter to look this big next to the biggest guy in the ibb right now i mean that tells me one thing not that samson got small or anything like that i think samson is gonna blow away hunter at the mr olympia if he can peak right and do the whole prep right without milo Sharchev. that's a big question mark of course but if hunter got this big it means that he made some really good progress and he's gonna look like a freak at whichever show he does now i do think that hunter's physique is kind of you know on a down path as well uh, but you know not size wise it seems like he's gaining size i don't like the shape of his midsection and I don't know, he never really peaks well, you know, he never, he rarely brings good fullness with conditioning. But, blasting full like this at the peak of the offseason, he looks like a legit mass monster. He doesn't look any smaller than, I don't know, Nick Walker or anybody really today. Name a guy who is much bigger than Hunter. There isn't one. So he's, uh, he's definitely one of the biggest guys right now. And we'll see how well can he get ready for the stage. Can he really maintain this similar fullness and come in conditioned? I think in his case, it's probably better if he comes in a little bit off with conditioning, but really full. Because he looks really good when he's full. If he loses the fullness, if he comes in flat, you know, it's, it's gonna look bad. I don't think it's gonna look very good. But with this new muscle, and if he comes in full, he's gonna be a force. He's gonna be a real force. Alright, and finally, we got a physique update from Nick Walker who is weeks out of New York Pro, and when you look at this photo, I don't know about you, but you might, just like me, think that he's not really in condition yet. I mean, he's not supposed to be in condition yet, but since he is the conditioning guy and he really maintained crazy level of conditioning in the offseason, you might expect him to be more shredded right now at this point, but really, he is already basically stage ready. Not to step on the stage like this, but I think he's only holding a little bit of water. And this lighting is not really making him look super dry. So if he just dehydrated at this point, I think he would be as conditioned as he always is. At this photo, under this lighting, you can see how shredded he truly is. And also, this is after a pump, after, after a workout with a pump. So he doesn't have the best separation possible because his legs are filled with blood. But you can see how thin his skin is. He is, he is shredded already, yeah. Other than that, as far as his muscularity and shape and, like, fullness, I mean, it's silly, really, to talk about this, especially for the New York Pro. I mean, let's wait for the New York Pro, and then when we, when we start the conversation for Nick Walker potentially winning the Mr. Olympia, we can talk about where he's at right now. But, I mean, if I had to say something like, man, he looks insane right now, he looks crazy, Look at those freaking delts, how much they're popping, and also the chest, which was a weak point for him not so long ago. The abs are looking crazy right now, crazy thick, the legs. I'm curious to see how much he improved them on stage, but I think the progression has been made from that Arnold Classic 2023. It's been a long time. I think his legs are going to look better. Overall, I mean, he looks insane right now, and yeah, he's going to win that New York Pro easily, and then we'll see what damage can he really do at the Mr. Olympia? Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And for more bodybuilding content like this, guys, please subscribe and stay tuned to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon, guys. All the best and bye-bye.